I went, right, okay, so what are we going to do? So then you start doing network meetings, virtual network meetings. And you're chatting away. And I started chatting. And I had some people I met who I really got on well with. Um, as I say, I, I am popular with women because I'm not threatening. So they can talk to me about anything, everything. And I, I just... Don't, I'm non-judgmental. Anyway, so we're talking about this, blah, blah, blah. Meet this woman, have this idea. And I'd spent 12 years coaching, no, seven and a half years coaching, but 12 years in primary schools. And I knew that primary age girl children from four to 11 are absolutely amazing. I once had a four-year-old um, uh, nursery girl I was lying on the floor to be at the same level as these children with my head on the on a uh, curb. She walked up my chest and my arm was very obviously limp. And she goes, oh, what happened to your arm? I said, oh, I had a bike accident. And she said, does it hurt? And I said, yeah, it does. And she said, I'm so sorry. I hope you get better. I went, thank you, sweetheart. That's a four-year-old. Then you've got right through the range up to 11. I had one year six girl wanted to be an astrophysicist. Um, and it's amazing. And then what happens is they go into secondary school. They realize that all of the world that we live in at the moment is about the external superficial sexualization of younger and younger children and girls generally. Um, it is still commonplace that a female politician the news coverage will look at the dress she's wearing it's an awful patriarchy that i do not accept um and so i met this woman and we started a project for girls education and in a conversation with her she just said oh yeah yeah i get three or four dms a day saying oh you're so beautiful with this and i went really now to give you some context so uh, my phone um, the, the, for the podcast listeners my phone is a flip phone the old sort no social media no internet no emails nothing if i'm on my computer then you could reach me through linkedin otherwise you're gonna have to phone me up um so she said i get these dms i went oh bloody hell i didn't know that and and she said yeah linkedin's bad but facebook is worse I went, oh my god so i went oh we should um i can't remember how my, my met my co-founder but um basically i put together i've been putting together all these conversations video conversations to help other businesses um personalize themselves to their customers and so i so i pulled together a group uh, one woman in America who's a massive influencer, 340,000 followers. Um, the woman who had uh, mentioned it to me, Gregory and me, and it was initially called uh, Abusive Connections, a LinkedIn problem, question mark. And we did a recording of that. And then Gregory said, oh, we should do another one like this. And it, it then became LinkedIn Me Too because I thought, yeah, it was a LinkedIn page, uh, LinkedIn Me Too work. So we did some with LinkedIn Me Too. And then as we found on a global thinker, sitting there one day going, well, there's two things. So uh, first of all, I'd seen an interview on BBC Breakfast News, uh, a woman called Soma. And she had, she was telling them about her in school sexual assault rape. And she had set up a website called everyonesinvited.uk. They called her back onto the program the following Monday. And in that seven day period, 10,000 victim stroke survivor stories of in school sexual assault. And I'm like, holy shit. That website is completely anonymous. It's slightly less anonymous than ours because you have to log in with an email. With ours, you just write the story. And at the moment, I'm the one who reads through it and, and, and lets it get published. 